views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests and not necessarily those of the staff and management of WWDB TV. <laughs> Hey everybody, thanks for coming back to Doing It With Styles. I uh, appreciate you every day when you come and watch us and uh, support the station. Um, it really means a lot to us and uh, say hello to all my friends down under in Melbourne. Hey, uh, Wild Wolf, uh, Stacy, uh, Stella, how you guys doing? So today, as you all know, I love rock and roll, all kinds of rock and roll. Um, there's a special place in my heart, it's not very big, but there is a special place <laughs> in my heart for heavy metal. And uh, today, I've got uh, John Gist. Gist. Not Gist. Not Gist, not Geist. That's right. There's a lot of Gist. them. Gist, okay. Yeah. And John, you're the CEO of Vegas Rock Revolution. Yep. What the hell is Vegas Rock Revolution? God knows, man. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's an events and show company that also helps with promotions, things like that. Okay. Um, our main genres are more hard rock. Heavy rock, uh, stoner rock, doom, some metal for sure. Yeah. Like last. So, yeah, it's just a lot of the rock uh, styles that really are kind of just under the radar. But the music is so good right now from around the world that right. it's, it's really time to kind of help these people along and get that music out to people. <laughs> so, are, are, are you, uh, you plan events? You, you mm -hmm. book or help? Acts get in. I started clubs, booking or? shows yeah. um, August of two years ago. It was the first time I'd ever done anything in the music industry at all. Wow. But I saw like a kind of an opening to it, just wasn't a lot of promotions and it was very narrow the styles of music right. that was getting the proper attention. So I said, well, I wonder if I can do it better than what's happening now, which was a pretty low bar. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, it seems to be working. I mean, uh, yeah, you've yeah, got been... quite a few groups that you've been working with and, sure. and, and booking throughout town. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there one place in town without pissing everybody off <laughs> right. that you like booking groups into more than another? Or? Well, I, I would say Counts Vamped is yeah. the number one rock club I've ever been to, meaning it's head to toe rock and roll. It, it, there is no other genre, right. styles, things like The place is decorated in rock and roll. And everybody knows parts. the place. Yeah, and it's owned by Danny Coker from Counting Cars. Right. Uh, uh, his wife, Corey, is unbelievable, has, uh, has really procured and made that place into a great business model. Yeah. The food's really good, yep. but everything is rock and roll there. And um, top notch, two sound guys, light guy. I mean, it's just really good. So they're picky on what they play. Yeah. Uh, to be quite honest with you, they're pretty pretty tight in the different genres, but but the place is just fantastic. And I'm very lucky. Cool. Very lucky. So you get you get to book groups in there quite often. Yeah, yeah pretty, pretty often. I got yeah. Thursdays once in a while I can do, and yeah, it's really cool. Cool. Yeah. So, what do you like best about what you're doing right now? Um, feels pretty natural, quite frankly, to yeah. to uh, to have so many things spinning at the same time. But the passion that I have, it's easy to wake up and go, I want to do something that's going right. to go towards. It's not something. like a job. It doesn't feel like it really, uh, other than time crunches. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> it's, it's, worse than a, it's worse than a job. <laughs> you know, it's just the time crunch thing is something, but I've kind of been, you know, I'm, I'm older, so I've been through a lot yeah. of uh, time crunches, timelines, deadlines, numbers that got to meet and all that. So I feel kind of toughened up for it, but it's humbling at the same time. I mean, I'm cool. not, I make mistakes every single time. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But... I think I win more than I lose on, on that, and I just keep growing, and I'm, I'm not stuck. Like, I want, there's more to learn, there's more to do. Cool. Yeah. And you got an event coming up pretty quick. It's the Planet Desert Rock in May. Yeah, well, May I, got, 16th. I got a couple shows coming up in March uh, over at Vamped on Thursday nights. Oh, okay. And then, but the, the big one right now that we're trying to finalize the lineup on is Planet Desert Rock Weekend Volume 2. And where's that going to be? Well, um, we're going to keep a little bit of that secret, but we will say that opening night will be at Counts Vamped on a th okay, Thursday cool. night and keep everything else a little under the under the radar right now. But it will be downtown Las Vegas 
for Friday and Saturday night. So is yeah. this going to be a, a multi-location event? Yeah. yeah, we did one in December with John Garcia from Caius, right. uh, Wino from The Obsessed and Spirit Caravan and all these other great bands. And um, we had three days, three venues. And at first, some people were like, you know, why the hell is it on the same venue? Well, it's really not that easy yeah. uh, for a venue even to commit to any level right. for styles where it's a good chance that they barely even know who any of these bands are. And, and, and unless they're guaranteed a whole shitload of money. No, there's no guarantee. Yeah, well, the, <laughs> the venues aren't guaranteed a whole shitload right. of money. Right. Regardless. So and, and that, that's they're in on they, the risk uh, with right. the rest of us, but they hedge it. You know, well, and, and the fact that they're willing to take the risk with you. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. I'm honored. Yeah. Honored to get cool. weekends at the places I had last time. And we, we did it at Counts. We did it at uh, Vinyl at Hard Rock the first night. Right. Which was just amazing to be able to do something there. The next night was at a Bunkhouse Saloon, which is a great place. It's an amazing sound, smaller venue towards the end of Fremont Street, that part, and then did Beauty Bar outside. It was like 40-something degrees outside. Yeah. And we had hundreds of people out there. Uh, the winds were kicking up and blowing and everything, but there were people from all over the country and Canada and Mexico that were there. So but that dude, was really if, cool. If the music's good, nobody cares. Yeah. I mean, it was it was people from all over the country. Right. So this time we expect all over the world on this one. And you mentioned Melbourne? Yes. Holy smokes or shit, whatever. <laughs> Melbourne is an amazing music city right now. That's uh, For my folks in Australia, you know what I'm talking about, all those bands. I don't even want to list any bands because then I'll piss off the ones that I didn't list. But that's <laughs> how big Melbourne uh, is and the rest of Australia. Uh, it's inspiring how good yeah. their music is. That's what, that's what my friends tell me as yeah, well. It really has. They really have the heavy rock, stoner rock genres down. Uh, it's just rock and roll, man. We can label whatever, but it's... Rock and, roll. and they're amazing. So there's Australians coming and doing my festival. And then the one the week after, it's Stone and Dusted, uh, which I'll be going to also. That's Brant Bjork cool. from Caius's one. And they do a, a day like out in a secluded location, a generator party for one of the nights. Yeah, there's a, uh, uh, speaking of locations, there's a couple of, the, yeah. you brought some clips in here. Um, yeah. And, and one of the notes that I made on the first one yeah. uh, was, was the House of Broken Promises. Yep. Tornado. Out of it. Torn, I think it's Tornado. Tornado. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is Tornado. Out of Indio, I'm California. Yeah. I, I'm old and I can't see very That's well anymore. Right? We're getting the same. Um, but yeah, I, I, I liked the location. It's pretty historic to some. Yeah. Yeah. And and I thought it was pretty cool. So um, we're gonna take a look at that right now. Let's if do that's it. okay. Yeah. All right. So um, this is House of Broken Promises, Tornado. Check it out.
I like that. Um, we talked a little bit about the location yep. on this video. Um, you want to talk about that? You want to tell us about that? You know, or? I don't have a ton of information. Did you do research on this? Do I get that feeling? I, I just watched the video. So, so that's a former, like, nudist colony. Right. At one time. And so it's really cool because, you know, around the, the, the inside the pool and all that. But uh, Arthur and Arthur, who is the uh, guitarist, the wild man with the long beard, right. uh, he used to be in a band called Unita with John Garcia from Caius, which most of the folks that at least know me know who John Garcia is. And... Um, so Arthur and Mike Cancino, the drummer, they're like literally, that's where they've lived their whole lives. Okay. And so they really know the lay of the land and have been part of that scene forever. Mike was also in Unita. And then uh, Joe was added to it. And they're artistic. They're go-getters. Uh, they're an amazing live act. I've had Passionate. them. Passionate. I've had them in the, yeah, absolutely. <coughs> Passionate They're the first players. band to ever play one of my shows. <coughs> really? Yeah, first one to come over. And uh, me and Arthur and Mike have been working together and Joe ever since. So it's really cool. They're great guys. The thing I always want to do is I want to work. Good, you put good people with good people together, we'll get great results. And right. uh, they've been just awesome to work with, and um, they're killer. Killer folks. Uh, are they going to be at the festival? They're going to be in involvement with it, we're going to say. Okay. We're just leave that. We're not doing duplicate bands necessarily. Each festival, I mean, we'll have a different, band, different bands. But uh, there's some things brewing, we'll say. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they'll be over there, I'm sure, in some capacity. So can you talk a little bit more about it? And, yeah, well. And um, tell us what the hell we can expect. Here's what you can expect. Uh, three, if not four days. I'm going to throw it out there right now. 16th, the, 17th, 18th, and maybe the 19th? Yeah, maybe the 19th. Um, there's a couple different concepts getting finalized right now for what the 19th could be. That will not be a nighttime one. Okay. Uh, that'll be one during the day. Some folks maybe leave that night even to, to go back home. What on? So it's kind of one that would maybe be from like a 1 to 6 o'clock, and we'll have uh, – a certain certain theming to that to that day. Cool. A really a showcase of sorts. Cool. Yeah. So I'm in talks. Uh, really, I'm waiting. Hopefully, as soon as I get off the phone here or off the off the uh, interview here, I hope that I have my finalization for at least one, if not two, of my my final pieces of the puzzle. We'll say for cool. headliners and stuff. Yeah. Is, is there is there something about this festival? I'm calling it a festival. It's a happening. It's, it's a, a weekend. It's an event. It's a, a weekend. Yeah. yeah. Um, that is really special to you that you're looking forward to more than any other, or is this just another? No, there's no, I mean, each time, uh, this kind of stuff's gone out of my head and what I wanted to do and right. mapped out and thought about over time. So to just kind of finally be able to, to put it together, and it's never just me as far as coming up with the different ideas within it, but Almost every band that'll be playing is one I, I went out and invited. Cool. Uh, I wasn't taking people going, hey, we want to do something necessarily. Right. It's more uh, a theming of sorts. But what I'm looking forward to is, again, working with John Garcia. And, John and, Garcia. And I like the, the theming concept. Yeah. It, it, it gives and, and some it's flow still to Planet it. Desert Rock Weekend, if that tells you anything. Right. So, you know, I may have other uh, events and festivals later on that may be different styles of music and we won't, it won't be called that so what's the, what's the cost going to be or do you know yet uh typically probably per day the tickets are running in the 50 60 at the most that's not bad uh, at all, man. the reason is the cost a lot of times every once in a while some people they don't know the music right so they have a hard time even thinking about it right but it's because we're literally sometimes you know helping with the transportation to get here uh bands aren't cheap Quite yeah. frankly, particularly when well, you and, want and, the and headliners to be. Yeah. They shouldn't be. And, there's and a, that, there's that's a delicate kind of what pisses me off. Yeah. You know, there, there is some incredible talent around. Yep. And, and there's almost, there's, there's very few venues for them. Yeah. Uh, it, it, making a living is almost impossible. You know, I mean, it, it, yeah. it, rock and roll has become so commercialized. And, and, you know, I mean, most of the groups that are making any money are the ones that are doing tributes. Around here, right? That's for sure, right? Um, yeah, it's almost too easy. It's too hard not to, to kind of jump and do some kind of tribute or cover band stuff living well, in Vegas because if, if you want to make a living, yeah, at least or to make some side catch at right. least it's pretty it's pretty right. easy and, and fun. So there are a lot of good musicians that are in those kind of bands. Yeah, it versus just you know uh, venturing out because the climate's pretty tough right now for yeah. new rock. Other than what. 
you know, the six program directors around the country that do for all the radio stations. I mean, it's not that many even involved with the actual curating of what the things are they're playing at this point in time. Right. And then you got Octane Radio that says they're the new rock radio, but they're literally like three genres worth of new rock. When there's other genres that like the general public would like if they heard it. And well, that's been the big I, problem. I, I the rock and roll is there, brother. Yeah. It's there. I know it the is. The bands are there. But everything is, is slanted at a different angle, not they're on a slope that just they gotta keep running uphill. So we're we're trying to to do something about it. Right. You know? Well they're trying to sell advertising and you know, all that crap. Yeah. But, sure, of course. Um, that's all it, that's all radio is. Yeah, and, and, and we are um, I mean here at WWDB TV, if we don't have a show going on, I'm playing music. Right. And and that's 24 seven. And I have tried to get enough of a mix to cover everything. Right. I mean, you know, I've got rock, hard rock, soft rock, sure. um, Latin. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, that's 80s. That's a versatile you know. radio stage right yeah, there. So yeah. So that that, um, you know, you never know what's going to come up next. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, you know, you got three in a row. of Sure. You know, yeah. You know, Joe shit the rag man and, and all that <laughs> other stuff. OK. So um, so what, what are you getting back to what you do? What do you like least about what you're doing? What's what's the hardest thing for you to you know, you got to do communication. It? Yeah. That's the hardest part. There are a lot of people who don't want to communicate um, directly uh, in any respect, uh, you know, to try to get like a sobering moment. Right. To, to talk on the phone or um, things like that, you know, Robert. I mean, it, it just goes with the game. People yeah, send are, me a text. People are really, really busy. Um, and, and I think part of building a relationship and, and understanding each other is actually having a conversation. A, a, and not a, just a through emails and text. conversation is yeah, best. Or, or even on the phone right. for some of these guys, it's, it's right. hard. So it's just, um, and, and I guess that comes as respect. You know, I, I'm just a nobody kind of, you know, yeah. trying to uh, just help and you know, I have to build, I guess, and, trust for people to go, oh, that's John, let me take that call, or let's, I need to talk time. You, so you some made, ways that work pretty good already. You made a very good point about, um, uh, earlier about the six program directors around the country, you know, right. programming all the music and stuff. Um, if you are nobody, how do you get to be somebody in today's market? Yeah. I mean, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, it was a hell of a lot easier than it is today because it seems to me, and I, I don't know this for a fact, this uh -huh. is just my opinion, all the doors are closed with a very, very few exceptions. And what's the door go to? Pardon me? So where does that door go to that's closed? What's that door on the other side of that door that you're trying to get in? Exposure. Right. You know? Getting, I, I mean, like I said, there's so many, if you go to any of the lounges in town or any of the, you know, there's some kick ass talent out yeah, there. Yeah, there is. And and you know they've got an uphill battle, almost straight up, to try to get anywhere or, you know, yeah. and it's a one in a billion chance for them. Yeah, yeah. But it the is. fact that they are, are, it, are banging it every day, every night, you know. Um, I mean, I see bands and I've seen people take it to the next level. I mean, I literally, right. um, it, it's it's odd, you know. I pay a lot of attention to stuff in life. I might be hyperactive and talk crazy fast and everything else. It's something I've dealt with my whole life. And but there's times of, of learning and observation that goes that I think is crucial. And I, I go back in time to something really weird. When I was in college, I went to college at a school called East Carolina University. Okay, it's over in North Carolina. It was number one party school in the nation a few years before I got there and all that. Uh, Twenty something thousand students. You know. Basically, if you didn't go to UNC and state or you want to be more around more normal people, that was the damn good school to be at. Yeah. Well, one a band that played there all the time, like like during Greek weeks and parties and and, and uh, certain venues was a band called Hootie and the Blowfish. Yeah. And they were from South Carolina for down there in Columbia. And they were a normal Joe Schmo band and they worked their, their asses off and they had a good crowd for whatever reason. They, we always knew that there were girls at Hootie and the Blowfish. Always it was it was almost like the music was okay, right? But we always knew you it was a party. The rods, right? We always knew it was a party, and the girls were there. So we got cool. I'm in college, you know, and uh, and boy, they have pretty girls in, in, yeah. in East Carolina. But anyways, um, who in a boatfish? It was like a couple years later. I was living at the beach, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, and they're playing over there. And then out of nowhere, boom! Yeah, they just, All, took just off. like that. 
And then within like a year or two, Edwin McCain, who's just a local guy playing guitar at Wild Wings, out on the balcony in the porch, he would do it like seasonally and he'd come back with different uh, uh, musicians. I mean, right. It's really fascinating. Again, always a damn good party, always a great scene. And his music was cool and he switched it up. When he switched the musicians, he, he literally would switch different styles. He had another guitarist once, and that guy blew it up with Solitude. And yeah. He was friends with the Udi and the Bo Fish, and that, and that band and a few others came out of there. And I just thought that was interesting to watch. It happened organically right there. But, I mean, it, it, nothing is completely organic. I mean, they were trying, and they were observing, and they were making, they were making choices and chances, but someone gave them that a gave shot. them a shot. And I think that's and, the way I look that, at it. And is, took that chance and yeah. took that gamble yeah, and, that's it. and believed enough to say, hey, there's a possibility here. And I think that that's what rock and roll needs more of. Yeah. When there's people spending enough time, committed enough to just whatever their specialty is. For me, my specialty is heavy rock that involves clean vocals usually, a blues-based rock and roll style, yeah. psychedelic, and it's from all around the world. And so I just listen to a lot of stuff from those genres, and I find, and I curate what I think is uh, really, really good. And, and hey, I listen to what other people suggest to me. I give it out to Bucky Brown, uh, a few of those guys like that. I mean, they're guys that they help with the funnel because it's overwhelming the amount of music oh, out there. And, and that's it, too. And, and that's and, what everyone has to find that source that's going to help them. For someone to take Whoop. the time to say, hey, you need to listen to this. Yeah, there's got to be something there. Yeah, and 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 I think that that the more exposure that we get, you know, when we're younger, we think this is the only kind of music there is. There's nothing else. That's it. Know? And and you yep. don't realize that that um, you know people like Alice Cooper hangs out with Tony Bennett. Right. Um, sure. You know, it, it's it's the influences of all of the different types of music that we hear. Yeah. That makes us create what we create. Right. So, right. So. I, I, a lot of people, they tell me, you know, we, we listen to, <clears throat> my first question I ask people sometimes when I'm in a car with Uber or Lyft, I, 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 I get in a car and I want to get some music going. I want to take over the radio as soon right. as possible if I can. <laughs> and I always go, hey, what kind of music do you listen to? The, the number one and almost every single time answer is I listen to everything. Um, and that's very much, that is like a one answer, like society in the last 10 years, that's exactly what I hear from everyone. Right. I think there's a warning signs here and there to that because then I, if, if someone really is that after a little pressing, then they're not, they're not um, an expert on anything music wise right. at that point in time, because I already know the amount of time we have in a day. I know you got to work. You got to do all these other things. I'm the one living proof that my main, main thing I do all day is listen to music, whether it's while I'm working or listen intently to, to see if this is something that maybe is wow. Yeah. You know what I mean? And for others, if you're listening to, you know, one night rap, the next night country, and then a little metal mixed in. Well, where are you getting your metal? Where are you getting your rock? Right. If you're getting from the mainstream sources, then you're just going to get exactly what the big power and the money want you to. Many, Even many. with Spotify and everything else, those programs are still developed, Pandora, Spotify, whatever, are still developed in some, re some way. I mean, they're all algorithms and stuff. Many, you know? many years ago, I'm in a, a record store, and, and for those of you who don't remember yeah. a record, it's about this big around. Yeah, so, they're big now. Uh, and um, so I'm walking through there just kind of looking for something, and I hear this music that they're playing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, it just stopped me in my tracks. And it was, it, was, it was just so incredible that I just had to stand there and listen to the whole cut. Sure. And I, I went up to the, uh, the cashier and I said, yeah. who is this? You know, yeah. what, what is this? Right. Um, and it's a guy named Lee Oscar mm -hmm. who uh, plays harmonica for the group War which is, ask your dad about that, he'll know. Uh, um, played harmonica for the group War, and he did a couple of solo albums. And the guy is, is, is brilliant. His right? music is brilliant. And, cool. and, you know, you think harmonica, and you, you just, you don't, it, it, you can't even, you can't even. One of my favorite songs has a harmonica, and it's called The Wizard. Oh, yeah. By okay. Black Sabbath. Yeah. That's, um, um, yeah. So anyway, you just never know where that's going to come from. Yeah, exactly. And and you need to pay attention to that because I agree. you're going to, it's going to take you from here to here to here to here, and yeah. and you can like this the best, but mm -hmm. man, there is so much. There is, and I think a lot of it comes down to trust, uh, and yeah. that's really really hard. I'm just another, I'm just another dude to some people. They're like, what does he think he's doing? What? 
you know, locally or whatever. People are like, yeah, it's just another guy. You know, his taste, my taste, whatever. You know, people look at it as a as a challenge uh, many times to say, well, you know, why is his taste any better than anyone else? I'm like, it's not. It's just something new right. you haven't heard in others. Uh, and if you trust me enough to come and come into to shows or listen to just press play on the video I send you on the text, right. you might actually like it, and that'd be cool. I don't and, get any and, benefit and, from it other than I'm. And that's it. if you if you don't like it, okay. Yeah. But if you do. You know, and, yeah. and I, to me, that's the magic. Yeah, I mean, that's it, key. It, I mean, no one expects everyone to know every like everything we give them. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's and, stupid. And and yeah, it is. Uh, but it, so. I'm really anti-stupid. I don't like things that are just naturally <laughs> make common sense, and then someone, someone, yeah, they come up with some stupid barrier, and I just ask a lot of questions. And I mean, I hate to do it sometimes to people, yeah. but I'm like, no, let, let's talk about that for a minute. Right. Because all you got to do is ask a few questions and you figure out some things. I I, I want to. I want to watch this next clip. Um, I don't want to give anything away. This, 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 this video actually surprised me. After we watch it, I'll tell you why. Cool. And this is, uh, this is John Garcia, Jim's Whiskers. Let's watch.
Awesome. That, that, I, I really <laughs> like that. And um, the thing that I liked about this video, I mean, it, it, the music for all three of these clips was great. Mm -hmm. I, I, I focused on the videos because they're videos. Sure. You know, sure. And, and you always, or I do anyway, I'm always interested in how did, what did they put what did, what, did, what was their vision when they put this video right, together right, right. to match this music? Sure. Um, this one, I didn't realize till the end what a great story this was. Yeah. Yeah, the next two songs, that and the next song both have like yeah. a, they're like truly a video made with a little bit of a story. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I, I really enjoyed that. And it was like, you know, it, it was cool. The video was good. And, and, and I thought the, um, I love the skateboarding. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know. And, and, and you'll, you'll see what I mean. But um, it, it was just, there was a lot of thought behind it. And, and I just, I really enjoyed that. Yeah. It, like I said, the music was great. I loved that. But it was, I was focusing on more on the video than I was sure. on the music. So. Yeah, and it was a moving kind of video, too. Yeah. Like, it's moving along and different stuff to see. Was so. that in L.A.? Good question. Yeah. I think, I, I would guess so. It, looked, really it would. looked like it to me because I, I, there's parts of it that I go, oh, well, yeah. yeah. Hey, I mean, John's yeah. from the desert also. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and most of these guys are too, but you know, LA's just hop skipping. Oh, yeah, yeah. My, you know, my, uh, my sister lives down in Palm Desert, so. Right. And I used to live down there, so. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And I, uh, I, I lived in LA, but. Uh, sure. Anyway, so um, I, I, I want to know a little bit more about the event. The, uh, okay. Uh, well, the, John Garcia yeah, has been an elusive individual for many in America as far as getting to see live. Right. And uh, him and I partnered up last December for Planet Desert Rock Weekend, the first one, uh, much to many people's surprises. Mm. I'm sorry, I did forget to mention that this is two. Volume two. Right, volume yeah. two. And uh, we worked together so great. It was so easy. It was a good, uh, a good relationship that was important is just respect. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I respect the hell out of what uh, this gentleman's career is, his abilities. Uh, this song is off his new album that just landed maybe just a couple weeks ago yeah. getting tons of views all three of the they've done two videos and then one's uh not an official video but it's an official video right. but it's not you know like an actual i video. understand and uh all the songs are, are are killing it majority great reviews by the fans i mean he's not trying to duplicate caius at all yeah there's no reason to uh but he is the the rhythm the groove of what they're doing with I mean, his vocals, I think, better now than they've been ever. Now, his style's not for everyone, but right. for most of us, we're like, holy shit, this yeah. guy still can sing. And uh, I think that song uh, really highlights Aaron Groban on guitar, really driving that groove. And, man, uh, just drums are just beating it. And me, you know, everything is – these guys are solid musicians yeah. that have been in other bands, and John's well, it, put it they, together. They are, are – and, and most musicians um, – are really hard working dudes. Well, John, hard working people. Yeah, I mean, John, John and, 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 lives you know, a normal it's not, life. It's not all this. party and not all, you know. <laughs> I mean, we both have friends in the business and yeah. in the industry, and, and, and uh, it's, it's, there's, you know, they're, they're busting their ass out there. They're, yeah. they're really, you know. Two, three jobs, you yeah. know. Yeah. And, that, and that's I have a lot of respect for musicians. That's why. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, honestly, it's, it's really crazy. There's so many of these great musicians all around the country struggling but they're putting out this really good music and it's just like hmm if you got the product yeah. now you figure out how to market or promote it and there just hasn't been if, a ton if of it. you can <laughs> nail that down it's what we're trying to do you will have it i think it's going to have it all I'm, i think it's going to happen um, because i think rock and roll as we know it and there could be people that grew up in the 70s 80s or 90s what about the 60s or the 50s? And Oof, man, I don't know if I did. Come on, man. You, out you fucking know. invented <laughs> rock and roll, man. <laughs> you wouldn't have rock and roll you're if exactly it wasn't right. for us. I was more referring to, you know, uh, people coming out to the shows and stuff. But you're exactly right. right. Of course. Oh, jeez. Of course. But, but um, it, it's, um, I don't know, I lost my train of thought, and it's probably because I was so old. But, yeah, uh, you're right. You're, you're, no, I'm <laughs> joking. Uh, shit, the 60s are um, an amazing time. I mean, well, hey, I, honestly, Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, which... Uh, to me, they're the forefathers of actually the real rock and roll. Right. Okay? We, you know, we we've had the blues and all that, and and I'm a I'm a blues fan, blues rock fan, all the way. I mean, that's the basis for what I like overall. You uh, are, are you familiar with the Blue Cafe in Long Beach? 
That sounds familiar, but I haven't done much time over in Long Beach. Okay, in, 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 and I hope they're still open. I hope to God they're still open. They've been, been there for years. It's called the Blue Cafe. Mm -hmm. uh, live blues seven days a week. Wow. During That's a week, rarity. During the week, they start at 530. Uh, on the weekends, they start at noon out on the patio, and then they play until That's 2. That's a rarity. And, uh, I, I hope mean, so often do. top acts. And, and I love the place. Uh, there is every kind of person that you would want to meet is there. That's cool. You know, there's old people, young people. Yeah, yeah. You know, hippies, you know, yuppie scum, you name it. Uh, they're all there, bikers, you know, that's blacks, good. whites, blue, I yellow. I think that's the way, that's the way my shows we want it to and, be. <laughs> and, and that's it. That, yeah. that is the universal language. It brings people together. It, it really creates. It can bring the world together, rock and roll can. Right. I know that sounds cheesy. And, but in a, just people just got to remember that if we focus our attention more on things that are positive. Right. Instead of dwelling on the things that we're victimized from or, or someone else is or whatever, we would just keep plowing ahead on something that we think is a, a positive thing that affects our life that could could affect others right you know music is an easy thing to do that and it's easy for people to get uh really hooked when they start digging it into other music other than what the radio is telling them to listen to right or what tv is telling i mean at this point in time tv is a massive part of music yeah and they've all become the same thing now they're messaging all the same thing i go in the grocery store i can hear the same pop garbage yeah I know. and listen <laughs> so my i think when i was talking about the 70s and 80s and even 90s was is we had a little more diversity in our music absolutely right? i mean there were more than one styles of rock and roll i mean you bet. i grew up with the radio having led zeppelin yeah on the radio on certain stations and hey i, I first to admit that i like disco and earth wind and fire when i was seven eight nine yeah. ten years old i mean it, it's all good now, we just all, we had certain styles of rock only, and they're stuck over here. Right. Then you got this poppier, poppier, poppier side of rock, and new rock stations say new rock, but their fucking playlist is 50, 60, 70 percent not new rock. Yeah. So, I, I, honestly, someone who's a multimillionaire who's got any balls, all you have to do is create a radio station template that's just playing new rock and roll shave off the rock and roll that already has its benefits and its thing and there's a whole nother product waiting for people well, because I'll, people are getting out of radio for a lot of reasons I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll tell you what I'll do I'll, I'll make you an offer I will set aside one day a week for new rock and play nothing but new rock on my playlist here <laughs> now it's a hell of a thing to do now you have to help me by providing me with you, sure. you say here's the music Oh, that wouldn't be that hard. That wouldn't be hard at all. Okay. I mean, then, honestly, I mean, 24 hours, Jesus Christ. You know, the song can play more than well, once, yeah, right? Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. If, yeah you, I mean, if you only send me seven songs, they're going <laughs> to... I mean, listen, listen. I'm not, I'm not some king of the hill, uh, big shot. I, I'm just the guy who is resourceful and knows, knows good music. Right. I, it, 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 takes a, it takes a whole a village... But, but I know people but that But what I'm do saying that. is that's what you <laughs> yeah. do. Yeah. I try okay. to organize yeah. in, a, in a positive way. Um, so it feels pretty natural to do this kind of thing. Uh, I, I did run into, I had to take over business units and departments right. in my pre previous life. And many times there are ones that, well, I mean, I was there for a reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Usually it's because things weren't going that great or someone was fired or quit or whatever. Right. And, um, I really like those big challenges of going in, and, and it, it involved, you know, you know, rearranging, we'll say. I, I, I but always, finding the right people working with you. Yeah. And it's the same with music. Building the team. It's building, it's just building relationships, being good to people, so they want to continue to be friends with you and trust that you are you have a vision going the right way, and I trust them yeah. the same way. I, That's I, why I'm honored to have guys like John Garcia and Wino came over. Wino stayed at my condo the whole weekend we got oh, to know each other awesome it's like this legendary you know uh, doom rock uh, vocalist yeah. it, was, it was it was wild stuff and i think that um the more we just build a, a positive community that is working in a direction but willing to sacrifice uh probably more than they're doing already uh, many times that's going to be the key a lot of people t are tapping themselves out because others aren't even showing any initiative and so they're above their mm -hmm. Their, their actions there. Yeah. It just, it takes the, the initiative that is needed for people are to get more people to like, to hear the music. Yeah. That's it. If we have the right music to present to people, 
you know, of the styles that, that it's a well, done deal. And, and, and that's it. Being able to present it to the people and having that, that venue or, or that station or that place yeah. where people can go because they can say. What's online now. And that's, that's yeah. why we're here. This yeah. is worldwide. Our right. audience is worldwide. Right. You know, and it's not like terrestrial radio or TV where, yeah. you know, this is your local station and once you drive 12 miles outside of town, sure. you've lost it. Exactly. This That's one is, of the big benefits. Right. Absolutely. And, and, and it, it does, I'm sorry, but music brings people together. Yep, sure it, can. It always does. I mean, I don't care who you are, uh, you know, if there's a song and, and I don't care who you are, I don't care how much I hate you, if there's a song that we both like, for that brief period of time, we are together. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Music can make it feel good, and there's a lot of people that sit at home at night, uh, even on Friday and Saturday nights, and they're going to play video games. You know, I'm, not, I'm going to talk specifically about there's a lot of men and, and, and guys that they're disillusioned. Yeah. They're sitting at home, uh, watching TV or something on Friday, Saturday night, you know, or they're online video games, or I mean, and all those things are cool, but if your social activity is so little we we there's all we already know what the size yeah. of where that goes at yeah. some point and just for people to have a reason to go out and not be intimidated to show up by themselves that's something i had to do that i had to break a, a very i've always run with a pack i'll be honest with you every ever lived i've had a group of friends and we all meet up and we go somewhere yeah this is the first time in my life i had to make that adjustment really really Difficult one. I, as much as I talk and I seem outgoing, uh, sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm not really, I'm pretty shy. Yeah. So it just depends on whether it can flick the switch or not. Yeah. And, you know, I was going to bars and night and, and lounges and stuff when I first got divorced a few years back. And I was hanging out by, my, by myself and I felt like the creep over in the corner. Yeah. And I didn't want to do that. And I, and I hated it. I wasn't getting anywhere with it. I wouldn't meet any women. Yeah. And then I'm like, screw it. I'm going to go just, just go to rock shows and just get out and live. Well, and that's, it, I was able to meet people that way and, and really get to know all the players and understand what's happening at the ground level. Right. And they, they've got the stages down at uh, Fremont Street. Mm -hmm. I think at, uh, uh, all three. Uh, yeah, three, yeah. They've got the four. different stages down there, sure. But I, I, I mean, even if you. And, and it doesn't cost you anything. Yep. You know, yep. get out, hear the different music, you know, yep. because there's there's usually somebody halfway decent down there playing. Yeah, so they do all kinds of crap down right. there. I mean, it, sometimes it can be fun to, at the very end of it is uh, Spandex Nation. Yeah. And they do like old school 80s and 80s metal and stuff. And it's always fun at 1 o'clock in the morning or 12 or midnight to go down there and uh, listen to that. It's just a big shit show down there, honestly. Yeah. But uh, it can be fun to people watch if you're. Oh yeah, no, no, no. It's it's a blast. And the music's good. They're, yeah. they're good at it. Yeah. Um, I, I, I have a friend that's a, a drummer. Uh, we have a mutual friend that's a drummer, Alan. Yep. Um, and him and I have had the discussion a number of times that that um, us rockers, if you will, are getting old, and we're one of the reasons that I'm doing what I'm doing here is to help keep that music alive and not let it get buried by some of the crap mm -hmm. that's out there. Yep. And, and, and so I think that what you're doing also helps that. And, and the new rock that you're talking about yeah. and, and, and these three uh, bands, um, they're different, but they're the same. Yeah, I, I mean, and I don't they're... think there's anything wrong with it. If we think of oh, from, no, 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 no. What I'm saying that's, that, a good that's thing. what's great about like it. From a mass consumption standpoint, if you will, from a business standpoint, having something that is similar but not at all a ripoff, right? Which you know, Grand Van Fleet's right there on the edge for people, and they're so controversial to regular rock crowd, underground rock crowd, despises them mostly. Again, I'll say. There's controversy over rock and roll. That's a good thing. Yeah. There's no fucking controversy anywhere about rock and roll. We don't have bad boys anymore. Name me a rock star in the last 10 years that this country has provided us. Think about that. Why have we gone 10 years? Because we don't have good enough musicians in our country. We're that shitty that all the good musicians decide to do country instead or something. Yeah. That sounds like bullshit to me. And if we go back in time, we look at the 10 years of music. There's damn good music. It should have been on the radio. Yeah. I mean, I mean all three of these songs should be on rock radio, and and that's part of the reason why I put it. Part is because these are bands that work with me and are going to be at shows. But well, they, it's they, easy to pick those three. They 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 will be on my playlist here if that's okay. Sure. 
Perfect. All three of those bands are unbelievable. I, 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 I want to take a look at the the, the last one, yep. uh, the Watchers, um, and uh, they're on the Ripple Music label, which is a, a fantastic label up in Northern California. This is, uh, I, I I think that this one was my favorite. Interesting. Of the three, and and not uh, not to take anything no, away from the other mean. two. Tell me. But but uh, let let's watch it first, and then then okay. we'll talk about it. So uh, this is the Watchers, and now I forget the name of the song. What, which one was this? Oh, you're supposed to have it on there. Pardon me. I forgot which one it is. Oh no no no, um, the Seven Tenants. Seven Tenants. Yes, that's it. The right? Watchers. The Ripple Watchers. Music. Coming up right now.
Okay, now, I'm going to tell you why I like this. A couple of reasons. One is, I love that it was shot in black and white. Yeah. I, I, to me, that was, uh, I, I, I kept waiting for it, you know, the first 30 seconds or so, I kept waiting for that shift into color. And the fact that it didn't was Did cool. you hit the monitors? I'm like, oh, turn it on. <laughs> no, no, no. no. But, uh, and, and check this out. At, at three minutes, about three minutes and 30 seconds in, there is an awesome guitar riff. Oh, that guy is. That, I mean, yeah. I'm just, um, just and, and, and so yeah. I think that that was why. And, and it, it, there's, a, there's a riff in um, uh, Stairway to Heaven, or mm -hmm. no, Whole Lot of Love. You, oh. you know the one I'm I was talking just about. Just on the way in, and and yeah. and that's what this reminded me of. I mean, I immediately went there. That 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 intensity, that that passion. Yeah. That um, I, I I I talk about Alan playing the drums. Yeah. That he is like an eight-year-old kid on Christmas mornings when he's playing the drums. I got the same feeling about this guy. That's and awesome. Guitar. Um, Jeremy Von Epp. Uh, watchers, uh, fantastic guitarist. I've seen him two or three times. They just did a remake of Ozzy's, Ozzy Osbourne's song, uh, Believer. Oh, really? Which, if that tells you anything, it, definitely some of his influences, Randy Rhodes. Yeah. Uh, for sure. And Jeremy's just a super cool cat. Uh, great guitarist. Um, he, he slays riffs every single al song on this album. Yeah. Uh, their new album coming out. Sometime later this year, or whatever. They were my album of the year, was The Watchers, if that gotcha. does something. And so my birthday's coming up on March 7th. We have a show. And I begged them to come down and play on my, my birthday at Vamp. Yeah. Ah, awesome. Yeah. Uh, what time? Uh, let's see, it's March 7th. I think we have doors opening at 7, first band at 8. Okay, cool. Three bands. Are, are, are they going to be at the Four uh, bands. Weekender? No. You know what? I'm not going to divulge that yet. Okay. I'm not going to divulge that quite yet. You almost heard well, maybe it here I am first. Right about it, but you get it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're that good of a band that I want the best bands. <laughs> you mm. know what I mean? Like if if they were playing March and I had them again in May, in theory, uh, it wouldn't bother me at all. And the local people that saw them on March seventh yeah. are going to like them so much that they're going to want to see them again two months later. Absolutely. And for others that are coming in town from all over the world, uh, to be able to showcase that band um, is an honor to me. And and. I think that's another thing that we haven't really talked about yet, but I think is important, and that is hearing and seeing a band live. Yep. There is nothing in the world like that, regardless of who they are, regardless of the kind of music, getting that there is a whole experience that you get that you just can't get listening to an MP3 or, or, so, or whatever. You know, Goes right to my heart. Yeah. Now, what hurts my heart sometimes is that a lot of people go to these shows for social reasons or they're band members, and band members have a hard time relaxing and listening to other people's music. I'm saddened by it. Yeah. It, it, it's really sad. Like in my, in some of our communities, when, like last night, uh, we had Haunt, Hellfire, and Idle Hands play together, right? They, they, they played, I mean, uh, down at Beauty Bar. And it was a Monday night, right? And there was like 40 something people showed up, which on a Monday night's fine. Yeah, no $10 shit. $10 a ticket. The bands, you know, at least were able to <laughs> not have to lose any money being in Las Vegas you right. know, and got through a show for their fans. Um, and it was an amazing diversity of people from races, ethnicities, men, women, older, younger, fat, short, tall, no midgets this time. Uh, I got to look up Mr. T and get him down there again. Okay. He's awesome. But. It's just when you see, you know, what can happen in front of you, it's just amazing. But other people, you know, the, the, like those band members, they were getting off and rooting each other on. Now, they're on state, they're yeah. on tour together. So that's part of a team. But for other, other, a lot of times other bands, folks that are from Vegas, when, you know, they're, they go to the shows, they're, it, it just feels, you look at them and you almost feel like they're kind of competing in their mind. Right. Instead of just getting into it. Just get closer to the stage. Focus in on the song. Yeah. Don't worry about what that girl's doing or your whatever is happening, and listen, enjoy the music. After the songs are over, it's social time, anyways. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's interesting to watch the dynamic. Some people never even leave the uh, outdoor area of Vamp. Sometimes. I mean, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. Because Vamp will take it all day because there's more drinks. Of course. But but they don't even know what's going on with the music sometimes, and that's sad. Other times, people. You see the look on their face, 
I th when the watchers came and they opened up for a band called King, K-Y-N-G, at Bampt uh, a little while back, I watched people. I watched them just look at, look, watching that first riff. This guy's Jeremy. Yeah. And oh, it's Tim Narducci kicking in the vocals. And it's immediately a stand to attention thing. And I just sat there and watched them, watched people captivated, not any longer looking at their phones, you know, talking to each other, you know, like that. Yeah. People that never heard them before because I talked to them before the show. And uh, it was so empowering to see that. And they have fans just from that night. We had probably 60, 70 people, and they were the opening band of a night that we probably had 100 some people in. Awesome. But we had 60, 70 there just for them to open the whole thing. Cool. And they gained fans that night. And that's the goal. And what I mean, gain fans is fans that actually friend them on Facebook and spend money on the band. Yeah. Don't just be a fan boy or girl and they think you're going to get things free yeah. from them. They need you to buy their shirts, buy the poster if you like. Exactly. It. Buy the album, for God's right. sake. Do something for people that you support, like not just your local musicians. Because well, it, we have to be diverse and do it. If you support are a everyone. fan and you want them to keep doing what they're right. doing, you have to support them. Right. That's what it's all about. It is. Because otherwise, it screw is. this, man, I'm starving to death. I got to go get a job. I can't do this anymore, it, you it, know? Find somebody else to yeah. replace me. Yeah, yeah. And, and bands are vice versa. Uh, and their thing is, they're the smart bands, they keep engaged with their fans. Right. They know to talk to people before, during, and after the yep. show, uh, respond to emails and, and requests, things like that. Um, these bands, many of them, they get it, and they work their asses off. And uh, that they're, when I hear that and I see it, that's inspiring to me that there's others like me that, that really want to work, and, and there's nothing that's more important in their life than making this happen. I mean, other times I see people who work really hard, sure, and I go, oh, no. Like, oh, my God, they're working that hard, and they're not going to – I mean, that's going to be hard to do for yeah. them, you know, and that's, that's tough. And people look at me and say that right now, and <laughs> I know that. They've been saying it for a year and a half. Yeah. I know the feeling. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, if I was a concentrator against those people, you know, and, I don't and know where I'd be in life even. The one thing I don't think that people realize is, like, these videos, uh, I know the work that went into this. Yep. Into each one of these yeah. videos, and, and, and the production values on these were – Top-notch, excellent, first class. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, no, no holds bar. Right. They did a um, good job. And and that costs money. It sure does. And and uh, so for you to sit home or or you know watch it on your phone or or whatever, um, these guys put a lot of blood, sweat, tears, and bucks into putting this stuff together so that you can enjoy that. Yeah. And and you need to appreciate that, you cheap ass. Never mind. <laughs> But we and, and, and we, we take have, a lot of things for granted because we, we get do. a lot of things for free. We do, and that's and that's the difficult thing with with music right now is with the services. Even it, it's just really easy for them to get a lot of stuff free. Yeah, and, and so that's where the heart's got to get there a little bit more and a little bit more of a I don't know a bigger bigger vision. You know, help. But some people that are that are supporting and all that don't have a lot of money. Also, yeah, you know what I mean. So it's a it's a two-way street in the whole thing. And, you know, I, I, I was mentioning, like, each one of my nights will probably be, except for Thursday night, it'll be less than 40 or 50, a band. The opening night probably be, I'll give you the number later. <laughs> okay. But that's going to be a lower one. Uh, but uh, the other one's going to be that, mean, that means you're coming back, right? No, oh, yeah, sure, okay. man. All of right. course, anytime. Yeah. Uh, who knows, right? Yeah. Um, but the other ones, they're going to be, like, 50, 60 bucks because we have to calculate out the numbers, and we don't know how many people will come. Right. So we have to hedge it. So we have to make sure it's an exceptionally curated lineup that provides a lot of comfort within everything there. And that's what we did the last time. No one was complaining that went to those shows ever complained about 40, 50 bucks. That's or 60 bucks. That's jump yeah. change. Well, you, you, for others, they were like, I can't believe he's doing, uh, it's charging 50 something bucks for a show at Beauty Bar. That's what a musician told me, some of his friends told him. Yeah. And I'm like, what does Beauty Bar have to do with it? Yeah. It's the bands that, that yeah. there. That's what we're yeah. paying for. If, if you don't want to spend that to see a band, go on a night when there's no bands. Right. And it just seems like a, we're a default system for someone to immediately think that negative side. And right. that's what I mean. Immediately when someone goes, 50 bucks there. I mean, someone say, what? 40 it, bucks at Bunkhouse? I'm like, yes, 40 bucks. Your regular crowd's not coming. Don't worry about them. Yeah. We got hundreds of others that are going to come instead that night. Exactly. And they'll go back to normal the next. And, and we're kind of running out of time. Sure. So, um... I, I want you to 
Is there anything that we haven't covered? I mean, we haven't covered a lot of shit, but is there anything that, that you want to specifically get out to our viewers uh, about, uh, about uh, uh, Vegas Rock Revolution? Uh, well, I'll say one thing. I'll plug one more show. Please, do. March 23rd, uh, or 21st, I should say. Okay. That's House of Broken Promises, Void Vader, War Cloud, and uh, Taking Dawn, which is uh, Las Vegas uh, Stud Boys. So anyways, that's going to be a vamped also. That's a Metal Madness show. That's going to be awesome. Cool. As far as what we're doing, you know, in case you don't know who I am, I'm John Gist. <laughs> Vegas Rock Revolution. I've been listening to music forever, and uh, I have a passion to help heavy rock. Yeah, that's it. And I'm going to continue to grow it in whatever way. Um, and I'm out for everyone to win in the end. That's what we're going to try to do. Yeah. That's the goal. I'm not going to get rich doing it, but my heart... I'm going to put time and effort towards this, and the goal is for all of us to, to make money as we grow yeah. things together. But people have to support uh, support stuff together, you know, and that's going to shows when you can, you know, and bands hitting towns that normally don't have shows. Yep. And keep getting the fans, and there's just a lot to it, but it's a lot of fun. It's gratifying. Gratifying. Well, John, I, Thanks, I thank John. you for coming in. You. Uh, you're welcome here anytime. You got stuff that you want to help promote and stuff like that. Please right. let me know. We'll help you get the word out. This is out. first class. This is awesome. And 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 uh, you know we we we're here for people like you. That's what the station is here That's for. Awesome. That's what our goal is: is to you know let everyone know what the hell's going on and what's really happening here. Sure. So um, I'd like to thank everybody for coming back again and putting up with us and putting up with my craft. And uh, just remember, if you're going to do it, do it with styles. Thanks. Nice work, John.